All right, um, this is a demonstration of my Captive Portal Network project. It's called Open Ears. Um, the name stems from um, the wireless access point. This is my first access point. Uh, I was named Ears because of the antenna. And I decided to create an open Wi-Fi network, hence Open Ears. And um, it, it, it suits it for two reasons. One, the network is open, anyone can connect to it. And two, it's based entirely on open source software. Um, this is the current access point. This is called DEFI because it lacks ears. Um, we have uh, zero console management. We have our test cable for going into our test client here. And we have a cable that goes out to the firewall. And we have um, another cable connecting to my internal network, which is trusted and um, separate from open ears. All right. So network details, just real quick. Uh, the Rochester network um, is the trusted network. Um, up here is where the Netgear switch goes. Um, these are just all the servers that are on the network uh, and my desktop PC and such. You can see uh, Defi has two connections. One is to the production network. One is to the open network. And this is the open ears network. It is 10.2.128.0.17 and that is um, the address range that clients connecting to the network will get. Alright, so let's demo. Um, instead of connecting to a wireless network here, um, because of RIT residence hall policy, I have to connect to a wired network. This is equivalent to connecting to the wireless network, except it has a cable. Um, this is just because they don't want um, interference with RIT's official network. Alright, so you can see we're it's getting an IP address here. Go ahead and wait for that. All right, so um, here's here's some details on how this works. Um, we are now we are now connected. We have um, an IPv4 address in the same in the subnet that was mentioned earlier, and. Um, the way this works is um, through NAT and um, requests redirection and interception. So um, DNS is actually fully functional. If you do like um, a DNS lookup, it will return the proper DNS record. So we have this, and now we're going to go to a website that is on the public internet. Let's go to winamp.com here. You'll see that it is intercepted and um, we are redirected to an internal network and actually this URL only works um, outside of or it only works inside open ears on unauthorized computers you, you can't actually go back here after you're authorized because of how the routing rules are set up so here is the login page it's nice and simple nice and dark uh, little disclaimer here for the few times I did test it with radio on um, discouraging people from entering their RIT usernames and passwords because I don't want to deal with that information so I can enter my username and password here um, this is actually going against a Kerberos account so um, this is network wide single sign on and thus um, I can you know, I can log into like a shell account on Nighthawk with the same information. So that's really cool. That's one of the special features. Can I go ahead and log in here? Let's cancel that out. All right, I am logged in, and you'll see that I can go ahead and continue to the website I was originally trying to go to. All right. So, accounts management. As you can see, we have um, XOR accounts here. This is just um, the uh, control panel for shell accounts. So, I can go ahead and log in here. And I can go to Wi Fi devices, and it lists all the devices that are registered under my account here. And I can deauthorize this so I can remove it from the list and it's deleted and now refreshing the page takes me back to the login screen so that's pretty cool alright next feature is guest authentication 
Um, one of the great things about um, a captive portal network is um, you have complete control over authentication and you don't have to deal with the messy details of authorizing individual users. So the solution I came up for this is guest accounts and it's basically a password that changes every day at midnight. Um, it's generated by way of an algorithm that takes Unix timestamp and runs it through HMAC SHA-1 with a secret key. Um, details of that are up in the code examples on my blog. So we have our guest username and password and computer name. Um, our lighthearted terms of use, just telling you you can't download kitty porn or copyrighted material. Just click agree here. Um, the reason we don't have the terms of use for um, real accounts is because they've already registered. You, they've already agreed to them when they initially created their account. So we have, you know, thanks for logging in. Um, it will keep your computer authorized for three hours, and then it will deauthorize it automatically. Um, since the guest password doesn't change until midnight, you know, you can just keep using the guest password. It's just, you know, this just keeps the table of guest clients clean. So I can hit continue, and once again, I have full access to the internet. Alright, so how is this configured? Well, when you connect, you get an IP address. Um, there's, there's no um, assignment of an external IP. You keep the same IP whether you're authorized or not. Um, and the authorization is MAC address based. So, you know, as long as you connect from the same computer, um, you will al always be authorized. Um, computer registrations are maintained in a MySQL database, which means that, um, one, this database can be accessed freely from the web, but two, um, if the firewall is ever rebooted, you know, because this firewall is eh, a little flaky hardware, it gets rebooted quite a bit. actually been up for a while now, but um, if, if it ever gets rebooted, you have the ability to um, have the web interface look, look up the computer that's trying to access it and it goes, oh look, this computer's already registered, firewall, go ahead and um, allow this MAC address through and it will uh, it will do that automatically without like making you re-register re your computer. And we have our networking hardware here. Um, we have a few configuration details on the wireless access point. Um, this is just how the interface is configured. We have a total of two VLANs on the access point. One of them is just one port that's for management. The other one is um, f the four ports on the switch that are used for um, the actual production open ears network. And the reason we do that is um, we have a separate IP address um, that we can log in that we can use for logging into the router to manage it. Um, we we don't want to allow connections to the web interface from open ears, obviously. So um, that, that's how I'm doing that and um, making sure that the access point isn't able to be compromised from um, just by someone who randomly connects to the network. Alright, well thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Um, there is a link in the video description to a blog post where I explain all this stuff in detail. And um, all the scripts on there currently mention IP tables and are, you know, they're all written for IP tables. Uh, since then, I've actually moved my firewall over to OpenBSD and PF, and everything works just as well, so I may update the blog post at some point to include configuration instructions and scripts for OpenBSD. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.